you? My name is Pussy Galore. I must be dreaming. Christian Grey. I'm Anastasia Steele. Ready? Whenever you are. The way that men experience romance in the media has always existed within quite a small realm. Not to say that women have been fairly or appropriately represented, but when I look at modern TV and film, I find it somewhat lacking. The experience of how men feel love on screen has never matched up with how I've experienced it in reality. On screen, the men that are worthy of love tend to be hyper successful or at least have an outer-worldly uniqueness to them that forms part of their personality and thus creates an innate appeal to their respective partner. While in the real world, most men I know have jobs, hobbies, sometimes partners, and generally like to think that they fit in. Now, credit where credit is due. I've taken a lot from Shrek's love story over my life and how personality plays a part in love, and even more recently, how Adam Driver's character Charlie, in Marriage Story, tries to come to terms with a broken relationship and rationalise it within his life. The one thing that binds all of these characters together is their uniqueness. James Bond is, well, James Bond. Christian Grey is one of the wealthiest men in his world. Even Charlie is a renowned director in New York. They are portrayed in a way where success is integral to them as characters, and in most cases, integral to their partner's interest. Where does this leave young men in their journey to find love? What does this teach them? That they must be successful before they can be loved? No, obviously not, but food for thought. I've asked some people if they wouldn't mind sharing their story of love, and how it came to be with the hopes that it normalises men talking about the intimate aspects of their lives. At the very least, I hope it will bring a little warmth to your heart in these weird times. Dude, I'm changing. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm just cold. Here, does that help? Yeah, that's very warm. What is that? Oh. Hi, my name is Bryce. My partner's name is Chloe. We've been together for three and a half years. When we're alone together, some people might see us as quite an old couple. We moved in together quite early on in the relationship, so we've kind of learnt each other's behaviour and become quite comfortable around one another. I guess the feeling more than anything is warmth. We joke around all the time, uh, it's probably a pillar of our relationship. I'm certain I managed to end up with her because of the ability to make her laugh. Little things, accents, characters, impressions, we definitely take the piss. Uh, it's healthy, I think, to know that you both have that freedom. I mean, we scare each other all the time. <laughs> We're just children uh, pretending to be adults. I don't think that'll ever change. Uh, we're in a position where we're both happy and committed to one another uh, and so the next steps are all to do with mortgages and kids and a garden and a dog white picket fence and all that and though some people might think that sounds hellish to me that's an ideal situation there wasn't really a moment of all right this is a thing it happened pretty naturally i think if you go a day without talking to a person and you feel like something's missing then that's a good sign that there's a meaningful relationship there love is strange Personally, it kind of sneaked up on me. It wasn't something I'd experienced before, and so it took me a while to actually identify it. Then once you've felt it, that becomes your core, and you try and give back as much as you get. I think when I'm having a bad day, just feeling low, Chloe can really cheer me up. She's great at prioritising things in my head, and then suddenly you feel better. It's always a work in progress. Just when you think you've fully understood what love is, that person does something or says something and you find yourself on a whole other level. And then they share true love's first kiss. 
with Shrek? You think, wait, 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 you think that Shrek is your true love? Well, yes. <laughs> you think Shrek is your true love? <laughs> Hi, my name's Ruben. My partner's name's Freddy, or Frederica, but I call her Freddy. Uh, and we've been together for two years and two months, three months now. She's gonna kill me if I don't get that right. <laughs> uh, we met through video games, um, through a game called Counter-Strike, and you get put in random teams, and it just happened to be that I was uh, put in a team with her, and uh, yeah when I was growing up, and I still am to some degree quite an anxious person, um, so I'm very self-conscious about a lot of things, but I'm not, and it, it took a while with her um, to get, for me to get to that stage as well, um, and she, she'll tell you, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like I have anything to hide at all, you can, you just feel very um, kind of at peace with everything, um, so I, I think that's the thing, you, you don't ever have to worry about what other people think, because you're so confident that that's the person that you're comfortable with and that they'll just, you know, if you accidentally, you know, or run naked through the house singing songs or whatever, they won't care. Like, I'm, I'm so confident in doing that now. Like, I would never just randomly jump around and sing in front of her or sing in front of anyone, but I don't really care anymore because I'm just so comfortable. So, Freddy is just physically not personality wise an incredibly cold human being um and there are many many times <laughs> there, was, there was a time actually about 30 sec uh, 30 minutes ago where i went through and she was doing her work and she was just really um really cold and i knew her hands would be freezing but i still kind of let her put them on me because I've, I've grown so accustomed to it now but yeah constantly you know we're constantly joking around so we've just got a flat outside well just outside Glasgow um, and yeah it's something that we've been discussing for ages because when you're in a long distance relationship you have to be going somewhere I mean in every relationship you have to be going somewhere but I think we knew that we wanted to get a flat at some point and that really helped ground us in the relationship as well that idea that we are going to close the distance at some point um, and hopefully finding jobs in Glasgow and uh, yeah making something of our lives hopefully <laughs> Just use the little one's crush on you to convince him, since he's so fucking in love with you. Jay? No, he's not. What, am I blind? He wasn't kissing your hand in the back of the van like he was fucking Lord Byron? Well, maybe he just has manners. Yo, baby, you have your asshole licked by a fat man in an overcoat? Yeah. I worked at a bar for a year. I wouldn't have chosen that as a profession had I not known that the end game was going to be Freddy being able to come over. Um, I used it as a motivation, a very significant motivation for me to go to work. So <laughs> the majority of times when I'd wake up and find out I had a shift or whatever, I wouldn't really want to go. But then I thought, well, actually, this is, you know, this is got an end game to it it's got an actual reason for me going to work and it's not what i want to do at all i'm an audio engineer i do that on the side for a reasonable amount of money um it's picked up recently but it's not consistent enough work and i knew that i needed consistent work to be able to properly save to make this a reality for us so i remember i can't remember which birthday it was honestly i can't i, I think maybe uh, it must have been a, two years ago now i, I believe um, and it might have been for Christmas, I can't, I can't remember, but Freddy gave me various different gifts. She gave me little things. And one of the things she gave me was a PowerPoint presentation for me. And it was 50 things that she loved about me. And I remember her going through this and just kind of hitting the space bar. And she, she, was, um, she was screen sharing with me, I wasn't there. Um, and it was each little thing. Um, I, I can't remember a huge amount of them off the top of the head. I think it was mostly like you play guitar and you're funny and you're kind to me and you're just generally a nice person. And I just remember kind of really thinking there's 50 things that this person loves about me. And that to me just seems crazy. 
Um, I, I couldn't really, I can't even think about 10 things that I would have loved about myself at the time. So having somebody else who meant a hell of a lot to me have 50 things that they really liked about me, that was crazy. Um, and I remember just getting like really fucking teary, teary eyed towards the end of it. Um, like I'm really, really lucky. Because there's so many people that like search for these kind of people and I've had relationships in the past that just didn't, you know, they didn't work for various different reasons. And I kind of very much gotten to the point where I never really thought I would find anyone else. Um, partly because I'm a bit of a social hermit, but I, I, I think it's just that idea that somebody can think so many fantastic things about you as a person that you wouldn't have even considered being positive yourself. I think, yeah, that, that was the most... I've still got the PowerPoint. That was the most loved I've ever felt, yeah. Yeah, you. Yes, you. <laughs> Fucking away. Aren't you? Fucking away. Like you're late for evolution or something. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's at it. I know. Everybody's at it. Except me. The Prince of Paranoia. Yeah. You see, at the moment, I am dealing with a monumental case of Mr. Floppy. And it's killing me. Softly. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? Love is strange. It's delicate, yet explosive. It's unseen and unheard, but will bring you to your knees at a moment's notice. Love has the power to bind and break us, but yet we still fall for it. Love has a way of burrowing into our lives, whether it's for a thing, a neighbour, a mate, family, maybe even a partner. But if you treat it right and nourish it well, there'll be no feeling that you'll be able to compare it to. Okay, keep going. He could remember all the inside jokes. He's extremely organized and thorough. He's very clear about what he wants, unlike me, who can't always tell. I fell in love with him two seconds after I saw him. stop loving him even though it doesn't make sense anymore.